everybody and a very warm welcome to this virtual joint meeting of the West of England Combined Authority Committee and the West of England Joint Committees. Uh, very quickly, may I just introduce my colleagues who make up the committees. Councillor Toby Savage, leader of South Gloucestershire Council, Mayor Marvin Rees, Bristol City Council, Councillor Dina Romero, leader of Bath and North East Somerset Council, Councillor Don Davis, leader of North Somerset Council, and a very warm welcome as well, please, to Professor Steve West, uh, who, as the chair of the Local Enterprise Partnership, joins us as part of this committee in a non-voting capacity. Just a couple of things very quickly before we start the meeting formally. May I just mention a few points in connection with today's virtual meeting. The meeting is being broadcast on the Combined Authority YouTube channel. As always, uh, just remind everybody, please, if you would assist by making sure that um, you're all on mute to start with uh, when you're not speaking. Um, we have made arrangements for the members of the public to join this meeting to present statements where they have requested them. And hopefully this will run smoothly. But just to note, please, that all the statements received have already been circulated and read by committee members and are also available to view on the Combined Authorities website. One other very quick point, if I may, as we are uh, working in terms of virtual meetings, uh, Chasia is always very, very thorough in ensuring that our legal process works correctly. And I'd just like to confirm that committee members have all had the papers circulated to them in advance of today's meeting. And if at any point a member loses connection and requires us to repeat any part of the debate, then please indicate this prior to voting. Otherwise, we will assume that you have all read the papers fully and are in a qualified position to be able to vote. Um, just before we start the formal meeting, um, I'd just like to begin by saying that I'm sure everybody here, all the members of the committee and everybody joining us, uh, will join me in remembering the tragic events in Avonmouth yesterday, uh, and particularly in remembering the four people who so sadly lost their lives as a result of that tragic incident. Now, I also, on behalf of all of us, pay tribute to the amazing work of all of the emergency services that responded to the incident and their professionalism and dedication. Don, I know in your capacity as chair of Avon Fire and Rescue, you do an awful lot of work with other members and please, again, I'd be grateful if you could pass on our best wishes to those that you work with, but also extend those very, very kind wishes and thanks to all those others involved in that event. I know a full investigation is underway uh, and that Wessex Water are working very closely with the Health and Safety Executive to understand just what's happened and why. But I think it would be fitting everybody and members here if we could just spend a minute in silent reflection uh, and tribute and as a matter of respect to the tragic events of yesterday. If you'd join me, please. Thank you all very much indeed. So we now move on to the next item on the agenda, which is apologies for absence. As I can see, everybody is with us this afternoon. There are no apologies to be recorded. Uh, item three then, declarations of interest. 
at this stage one formally asks if any members have any declarations of interest and any items on the agenda please would they indicate now and just highlight which agenda item that might be i note for the record that there are no declar declarations of interest therefore item four is minutes of the previous joint meeting these minutes have been circulated Members, were there any particular comments regarding the accuracy? Members, as there not, aren't, are we all happy that we confirm these as an accurate record of that meeting? I notice people are nodding and acknowledging, so thank you. We will do that formally. Um, just before we move on to the other aspects, there's just one or two things I'd like to say. Um, clearly, since we last met, we have been into and in emerged from another national lockdown uh, with new ongoing restrictions that have varied across the region. We appreciate this will pose its own challenges, but earlier this week, uh, we were met with the welcome news that the UK has become the first country in the world to approve a vaccine for use. So we hope we can look forward to a better year next year in that sense. So we appreciate the struggle isn't over, uh, but we do realise that we're on hopefully a road to where we can start getting back to some sense of a normal way of living and working alongside mass testing. And I'm very mindful to Steve West from earlier conversations about the sterling work that all of our universities are doing in working with our students in that space. You'll remember that earlier this year we published an ambitious recovery plan to rebuild our business, get residents back into good jobs, and plan for a green recovery that strengthens inclusion and renew, renews our places. And it's very important that we continue to work on that basis and keep working collectively to make sure that we see a positive future for the whole region. As part of that, we've uh, secured additional AEB funding to help those who are unemployed get back into jobs. And we're making sure that the £23 million of additional restrictions grants is delivered consistently um, across the some 2,000 West of England businesses who applied and that we're extending the Low Carbon Challenge Fund with an additional £1.8 million investment. And our thanks to all of our councils and all of their teams who are working so hard on those grant applications. Uh, and of course, this complements the significant investments we've already made in regional initiatives, including our Metro West rail network, business support and innovation programmes, our workforce for the future and future bright programmes to make sure our region really is as strong as it can be as we move forward into those next stages of our economic recovery. And we continue to get uh, our region moving. Last week the Chancellor confirmed multi-year transport funding for the combined authority regions from 2022 to 23 so that we can continue to deliver our ambitious sustainable transport plans. And it was very significant to note that there was new funding for cycling and walking, and I'm sure we're all very pleased to see feasibility funding for the St Anne's Park station in Bristol. And as part of our future transport zone, we've launched our e-scooter trials in Bristol and Bath last month. Really interesting that since the start of the trial, in spite of COVID, more than 10,000 people have taken almost 26,500 individual rides on the new technology that we've introduced across both Bristol and Bath. And if we didn't have a combined authority, this is the sort of funding that we wouldn't have been able to attract and deliver. That's why it's really important that uh, I and the rest of us all work in the future across the joint committee regions to make sure we're all committed to continuing to work together. And I know I'm looking forward a little later to look not just at the combined authority programmes, but at the one front door programmes that will support projects across the whole of both the Weka region and North Somerset to make sure we develop that prosperous and long term future. So thank you for just a couple of comments there from myself. We will now move on to item six, which is items from the public, um, which covers questions and statements. So to date, I beg your pardon, at the close of uh, the notice period we had received 15 questions that were submitted to the meeting and as usual details have been circulated and written answers have been provided. In terms of statements 
we received 75 statements uh, and we've made arrangements for those members of the public who indicated that they would like to speak today to join us. And I'll shortly ask Ian to do the honours in that. But uh, I just remind everybody that we will invite individuals who've indicated to speak to talk to us for up to three minutes per statement. Also, please bear in mind those statements have been circulated already. And I will give people notice uh, when they have a minute left to speak. May I also draw your attention to some accompanying comments uh, that we published at uh, part of the statements pack that's been distributed that were in connection to one or two of the comments that, I beg your pardon, the comments made in some of those statements. So Ian, I hope my list is correct because I believe the first member of the public that we're going to welcome is Dave Regwell. Would you like to see if Dave's with us, please? Yes, that's right, Chair. And we're just admitting David to the room now, Chair. Just connecting now. Dave, a very warm welcome to you. And would you just uh, let us know as soon as you're connected, please? Dave, I think I can see you and I can see you've gone off mute. Very warm welcome to you as always. Dave, you know the form, but you are welcome to talk to the committee for up to three minutes. I'll remind you when we've got a minute or so left. Dave. Thank you. I want to think the first most important thing I'd like to say on behalf of the transport user groups and the unions is we need to get North Somerset Council into the Western Combined Authority. There's no doubt about that. For geographical, for economic reasons, for public transport and for planning, we need North Somerset as part of the city region. So I'm just urging everybody today to look at this with Luke Hall and with Patrick and with um, the Secretary of State and to make sure that we make progress on this in discussions and negotiations with Luke Hall, the Minister. And we have meetings to make sure that happens between the four leaders and we meet with um, uh, the Secretary of State as well as the, the junior minister. I think the other, the other point I would make about that issue is time is against us and we need to get a deal over the line. We definitely need a second devolution deal to improve public transport, to bring in things like the cost of running public transport in North Somerset. Obviously their, their um, rail improvements, their uh, Metro bus services to Nelson and Cleeton and their local bus network. So it's absolutely crucial. And if we can't get over the line by May, we must consider the same as Somerset delaying an election for the Western Combined Authority in May. That's absolutely crucial. That's one thing we'd like to be considered. On the domestic issues, rather than just the issue of the politics of expanding WECA, um, on buses, we're certainly very keen to make sure there are plenty of Christmas buses. We're aware that the 18 and 37 aren't running this Christmas, and I think that needs to be taken up by the officers. That's Bitten, Kingswood area, Bristol, Bath, um, without bus services links into Bath and Cainsham. Uh, HCT group, we want to see uh, screens fitted immediately onto their vehicles. Uh, they run in at the hospitals on Bristol Community Transport Contracts, the WECA and uh, North Somerset. And we're also very keen on the rail projects. I welcome everything. I welcome the money for the Marvin Reese and yourself got for St. Anne's Park Station with Tim Repton, and the local councillor. We need to make sure that we find a way forward on Charfield and Gloucester Line and Hembury. I notice they're not full of the uh, process at the moment. So I'm very keen to see progress there. I think we all agree with yourself, uh, Mr. Mayor, on the issue of the tier level. I hope this doesn't happen again for a public transport nightmare trying to travel between Bath and Bristol, North Somerset and Baines. I, I was very grateful you spoke out. I mean, it's a nightmare for enforcement by the Avon Somerset Police, British Transport Police and COVID Marshals to try and keep people in the Bristol Bath conurbation and not slipping into Bath or slipping up to Gloucester or down Not to the Mendes. Minute, okay, and the final thing I think I'd like to say is to try and uh, make sure we move forward on the rapid transit project. I think we need to, in the report today under Network Rail, it puts it in 
in about 20, 28, 2030. I would like to see that project move forward. I know um, as Marvin Reese would like to see that project move forward. And I think it's very, very important with yourself that we find a way of bringing light rally into the greater Bristol conurbation. Thank you very much. David, perfect timing. Thank you very much indeed. Always very pleased to see you. Thank you. Was there, a, Dina, would you like, to, was there anything you'd like to just mention? Yes, um, I'd like a point of clarification um, ad address, please, which is, first of all, this uh, point that um, David made about uh, whether we can delay um, the uh, Weka election. Um, and I don't know whether or not that's something we could ask perhaps Shazia to, to address. And then I have a question that I'd like to, to ask um, David as well, if that's OK. Uh, very, very quickly with Shazia. My understanding is our order makes it explicit when the next election is. Yes, Chair. At the moment, it's scheduled for May 2021. Obviously, you can make a request to government to delay it, but that will be at the discretion of central government. OK, Thank so that, that's down to central government then to 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 do that. Um, and I just wanted to ask um, David, who, sorry, has disappeared from my screen. So I hope he's still here. Sorry, Chair, uh, David isn't, isn't there in the moment, at the moment. I'm sorry, Chair. He's, uh... That's OK, then I will not ask my question of him then. Dina, thank you. Any other comments? No. Thank you very much, Dave. Appreciate uh, all of the work you do uh, in the background as well. So thank you. Um, Ian, the next on my list is Kim Hicks. Is Kim with us? Uh, yes, she's in the waiting room chair, so we will uh, admit her to the meeting now. Thank you. And should just be connecting. There we are. Hello, Kim. Hello. Good to see you. And good. Thank you. Your audio is working. I think you've spoken to us in the past, but just to remind you, you're welcome to talk to the committee for up to three minutes, and I'll give you a reminder as we're approaching that time. Thank you. Over to you, Kim. Thank you. My request to Wecker is simple. Please delay the closing date for the planning of, for the future survey, not just over Christmas, but until you are confident that a true cross-section of the Weka residents will be able to actively engage and respond. The survey timescales covers a lockdown and while the majority of the area are still under th tier three restrictions. Local volunteer people want to help at the moment, but they are physically unable to help get the message out on Weka's behalf to help those that need it. It is really important that everybody has the opportunity to have their voices heard when contributing to a document that will be so important for years to come. Telling non-digital people online that they can ask for hard copies does not actually work. For us that use new technology, it is very easy to become complacent. The offline alternatives are only good for online people who actually know about them. Not being online should not be a disadvantage. You are asking for views to make sure that the SDS plan reflects the priorities of the people who live, work and play in the Weka area. By not reaching those who are not non-digital or need help to complete the survey, you will not be able to achieve the aim of the survey. It is appreciated that the survey is not mandatory or a legal requirement, but if it ex excludes so many people, it will not be robust evidence to work with. We are told there's a light at the end of the tunnel. If you do not delay the closing date until the light shines brighter, you will be not cr creating a plan built on solid foundations. The lessons from the failed JSP must be learned or you risk making the same mistakes again. That would be a waste of even more time and money. Please do the right thing and delay the closing date until you can be confident that all residents have the opportunity to be involved and have their voice heard. 
In answer to my written questions, you say a notification. Another 30 seconds, Kim. In answer to my written questions, you say that notification went out to every consultee of the JLTP4 and other surveys. Presumably, this was sent online. I rest my case. Thank you. Kim, thank you very much. Dina, you put your hand up. I have indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Kim, um, really lovely to see you. Um, I, I mean, this is clearly uh, an equalities issue. So to, you, to your mind, are there other ways that could have been used and perhaps should have been used to alert people uh, to, to the survey? Well, while the lockdown's on, the only alternative is either phone calls or letters. But as you say, it's difficult uh, for people to request that if they don't know that it uh, is something that is out there. So That's perhaps right. we need to take on board that and ensure that we don't just rely on online media, but utilise um, you know, radio and, and uh, TV at the very least in order to ensure people do know about this. That's right. I mean, the local group's been very, very helpful in previous surveys, and we've done a lot of voluntary work to help get the message out to make sure that people's voices are heard. Uh, we can't do that at the moment. We can't go knocking on doors um, and doing all the things we've done in previous surveys. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Thank you. Dana and Kim, thank you both very much indeed. Um, the next speaker on my list is Jackie Head, I believe. Is Jackie with us here? Yes, just admitting her to the meeting now, Chair. Jackie, good afternoon. Hello, we can. I can see you. Do you just mind just letting us know if your audio is working? Do you just mind saying hello, Jackie? Please, could we just test your audio? Please, could we let let us know we can hear you? Jackie, we're struggling. I'm not able to hear you. Could you just let us know if your microphone's working, please? Sorry, helps if I put my headphones, headphones on. That Say that one more time. <laughs> Thank you. That's perfect. It's always worth just double checking these things. So, Jackie, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you're very welcome to talk to the committee for up to three minutes, and I'll give you a reminder when you're nearing your time. Over to you. Thank you. Um, I think during these recent um, COVID times, we've realised more than ever that we can't separate areas by borders and uh, act just in a kind of parochial way uh, about our own needs. Um, and so I want to talk to you about the expansion of Bristol Airport. I recognise that it's um, in North Somerset and North Somerset at the present time is not part of Weka. However, your authorities are directly impacted by the airport um, and the expansion of the airport would have a direct impact on those people who are in your constituencies. I don't think you can sidestep this and say this doesn't concern us because it's not in our jurisdiction. I believe there is something you can do. Firstly, just to clarify that the expansion of the airport makes no sense, uh, particularly uh, post-COVID where um, it's much reduced anyway. Um, it also makes no sense to save people's jobs because those jobs are likely to be lacking in security um, and often the low paid end of the scale anyway. Um, I, I think it also makes no sense in terms of the climate and nature emergency that um, you are trying to address within your own authorities. Given that that is the case, and given that Baines has already um, publicly uh, said that they do not support the expansion of the airport, I would like Wecker to also take the bold step and make the same statement um, clear and public. 
Um, one of the things I'd like to draw your attention to is your potential to influence what happens next in terms of the airport. And one of the things that you could truly influence and be part of a paradigm shift is to say, we will not prop up poorly paid, insecure jobs. Instead, we will invest in training so that those people currently working in the airport can work within the green industries giving people access to free training so that they can become uh, the future champions of the green industry is what is needed from you right now. It's that kind of forward vision and that kind of boldness that you need to embrace. Um, and I believe that although you are not directly responsible for decisions made in North Somerset Council, you can lead the way, you can, seconds, you can use your influence uh, to, to change the way that we're thinking about the issue of the airport. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you joining us. And thank you for your comments. And it, in that case, thank you. Um, Ian, I believe I have the next person is Rachel Lunnan on my list is Yes, Chair, and she's just joining us now. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Hello, uh, I can see Dr. Lunnan, uh, an icon's appeared. Would you mind just let, oh, hello. I've just, you just shifted on my screen. So you clearly switched your camera on. Lovely to see you, very warm welcome to you. Uh, could you just let us know that your microphone is working? Um, yes, hello everyone. Wonderful. In that case, I will just remind you, you're very welcome to talk to the committee for up to three minutes and I'll give you a reminder when you're nearing your time. Thank well. you. Um, yes, hello. I'd like to um, sort of support what Jackie was just saying previous, previously to me. Um, I also want to talk about airport expansion and to really ask you, Weka, to publicly come out and oppose the airport expansion. So we've got Boris Johnson's just announced our new ambitious targets for reducing carbon. Um, and yet um, those don't include aviation emissions. But the thing about those physical processes that are driving climate change is they don't care where the emissions come from. Um, Mark Carney, former governor of the Bank of England, is currently giving wreath lectures where he's talking about how we cannot leave our future up to the market alone. And he is talking about the climate and ecological emergency there. And so what I'm saying to you is we've got a moral duty to protect our children and all young people as well as our future selves. And that duty includes leaving them a habitable earth. So I want you to recognize that. And as Jackie said, come up with a, a statement opposing airport expansion. And I really want to see, I, I know that people are really worried about jobs and employment, but we can have a green and environmental um, economy and recovery. And that's what we need. Thank you very much. Rachel, Dr. Lund, thank you very much. I was just sending a quick message to Ian because I'm afraid we seem to have lost Dina, which is unforgivable. So would you mind just seeing if we can um, get Dina back in, please, Ian. Um, Dr. Lund, thank you very yes, much. If she tries to reconnect, Chair, we'll get her back in as soon as we possibly can. But, um... Thank you. I will uh, send her a note to that. Dr. Lennon, thank you. I was just looking to colleagues if they had any comments. No, in that case, thank you very much. Appreciate you taking the time to come and talk to us. Thank you for your statement, which has been shared with everybody. Thank you very much indeed. And Ian, the next person we have is Councillor Allinson. And in the meantime, I'll try and text Dina to ask her to reconnect you. Would you like to let Brian? Yes, and uh, Councillor Allison is joining us now, Chair. Yes. 
Brian, a very good afternoon, very warm welcome to you, my friend. Um, I think you're probably familiar with the score here, but you're very welcome to talk to the committee. We're up to three minutes, and I'll give you a reminder when we're getting a little nearer the time. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to the report that I've already submitted, and I know you have copies. So I will just uh, restrict myself to sticking to the, the major points. The, the, the real issue, of course, is the Parkway Railway Bridge, built over 70 years ago now, which was adequate at the time and, and, and until recent years caused no problems at all. But in very recent years, the growth of housing uh, to the south of the bridge, but more critically, the Ministry of Defence uh, complex, the AXA Sun Life Building, and two new housing areas have caused a huge increase in foot traffic passing and repassing through the bridge. And then critically, on New Road itself, three large educational establishments opened uh, in recent years. And now we have a toxic situation where we have pedestrians, cyclists and heavy traffic all trying to pass through the bridge at the same time. It really was a very dangerous and toxic situation. In recognising that, South Gloucestershire Council last year uh, introduced, or uh, sorry, this year introduced uh, a one-way shuttle system uh, for vehicular traffic. It did enhance the safety of the pedestrians and cyclists, of that there is no doubt. But it has now started to cause severe congestion, especially during uh, rush hour times, where traffic is queuing on both sides of the bridge. And indeed, there have been incidents where ambulances on blue light missions have had to wait in the queue because they couldn't get through the bridge. The situation is going to get worse because of that, the, the new uh, estate planned at Harry Stoke uh, and other uh, extra buildings that are coming to two more supermarkets to the area as well. So we really do need to take urgent action to separate the pedestrians and cyclists from the, the, the traffic passing under the bridge. The cheapest way of doing that would appear to be a separate pedestrian tunnel bored through the embankment uh, to, to separate the two classes of, of uh, road user. And that's really it. Uh, I won't uh, keep on any longer, but would just say that I appreciate that this is a 10 year program, but the situation is now reaching a critical level and really does need dealing with somewhat urgently. Thank you, Mayor Bells. That's uh, all I have to say. Brian, thank you very much indeed. Um, I don't know if there were any comments from others. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm just looking, I think not Brian. So Brian, thank you very much. It was always nice to see you, my friend. And my thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Um, please, may I just direct a comment to Ian that Dina is getting in touch with me, but she says, if you, could you just look at your chat? She so, yeah, I've just resent her the link. I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. I've resent her the link. So I'm keeping a very close eye on the, on, on the waiting room. So as soon as she um, attempts to reconnect, we'll let her in. Apologies for that. So. You no, know, quite right. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that the chat was being picked up. We're in conversation with her as well. Um, we have one other speaker for today, and that is Mr. Lloyd, as far as I understand, Ian. Uh, yes, he's just connecting, Chair. Lloyd, good afternoon. I'm pleased to say I can see you. Thank you. Just wanted to check that your Hello, good afternoon to you. was working. So thank you for taking time to come and join us. Um, you have up to three minutes to talk to the committee, and I'll give you an idea when you're nearing your time. So over to you, sir. 
Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm representing Friends of Suburban Bristol Railways or FOSBRA, and I'm thanking you for opportunity to address you today. Firstly, um, I know this has been touched on before, but I'd like to just briefly touch on the subject of the proposal by North Somerset to, re, uh, to formally join WECA. We fully support this, and um, we, we re realise now there is a chance to get this right and put, for them to join us. We understand there are problems with the funding and, and general dispute about it, and it's not our place to get into politics. But we strongly urge all parties involved to get around the tables and sort it out before the deadline expires. It shouldn't be behind the, beyond the wit of man to do so, especially as we've been assured by all the local authority leaders concerned that this incorporation is welcomed. The reason for our welcoming this proposal is not due to some sort of fuzzy idea, but because we think this could lead to the formation of an integrated transport authority for the whole Bristol travel to work area. Besides being essential for real coordinated transport plans, it would help to leverage in more money for transport, including rail. We only have to look at Greater Manchester, Sheffield, West Midlands to see what an ITA supported by the will of all parties to get things done can achieve. Coming on to the Strategic Rail Investment Report and 10-year delivery plan that you are discussing today, um, we'd like to say that FOSBRA warmly welcomes the investment in rail that is planned and outlined for the next 10 years. Of course, we've got various questions and comments which will happen over time and you expect that. Um, but the fact is that it is a rail report and it is a plan for rail in this region. And that's got to be good news. And also that it's also a joint network rail initiative as well. So network rail is on board and that bodes well for actual delivery. Of course, even the best laid plans can get off blown off course and we don't know how much money is going to be available post COVID. Will the government continue with its investment uh, as being one of the key factors in moving the country forward? Um, and we are pleased to see that the, the report that you're discussing, the strategic plan, rail investment, does go along with the idea that infrastructure is important for economic recovery post COVID. Yeah. We're also heartened by the recent announcement announcement that network rail's grip process is going to be replaced by pace. We hopefully be more simpler and more flexible. Obvious from the Portishead line fiasco that the grip process was not fit for purpose. In conclusion, I'd like to reiterate the rail plan that we, we commend that. We are pleased that a sum of money, about one million pounds to be brought forward for the preparatory works for the introduction of Metroways 1A and with a firm delivery date by the end of 2021. So, yes, we're happy with it. And uh, I'm sure we'll discuss in the future. Thank you. Well, thank you for your encouraging comments. Um, just looking to see if there were any comments from any members. Thank you. Mr. Lloyd, thank you for joining us. Uh, right, at this stage, friends, um, in the background, we have been trying to get Dina to get her back into the meeting. As at the moment, there's a technical difficulty. I'm going to propose that we adjourn the meeting um, just so we can sort that technical difficulty out because it's vital that we've got Dina as part of the committee to join us.